Have you ever imagined what it would be like to discover a world where everything is larger than life? Join us on an epic journey to the land of the giants, a massive adventure where a group of intrepid explorers stumble upon a land of gentle giants. Through their journey, they learn invaluable lessons about humility and respect, proving that true greatness lies not in size, but in the heart. The story unfolds within the hallowed walls of the Royal Geographical Society's library in London, a labyrinth of towering bookshelves filled with manuscripts ancient atlases and dusty scrolls, it bore a musky scent that told of the countless centuries of knowledge it safeguarded. This was where our group of five intrepid explorers found themselves, each drawn by their insatiable curiosity. The historian, Dr. Amelia Pemberton, was a petite woman with spectacles perched on her nose and a mind bursting with tales of the past. Dr. Oliver Hartley, the biologist, had a keen eye for life in all its forms, an attribute mirrored in his vibrant, observant eyes. The geologist, Professor Liam Gallagher, sported a rugged beard, reflecting his many years spent in field expeditions, while the engineer, Miss Isha Gupta, was a woman of towering intellect with a knack for solving problems. Their leader, Captain James Abernathy, was a seasoned explorer with a heart full of bravery and a spirit touched by wanderlust. On this particular day, they were huddled around an ancient map sprawled across a grand oak table, its edges curled with age, the ink faded but still legible. It was a remarkable find, discovered by Dr. Pemberton tucked away in a forgotten corner of the library, between pages of a crumbling old tome. The map depicted a landmass of incredible scale, untouched by the familiar strokes of human cartography. The parchment was rough to the touch, with lines and symbols in a script none of them could decipher. Yet, there was a magnetic pull about it, a promise of uncharted territories and lost civilizations. It pointed to a place far beyond known boundaries, a place that existed only in myths and legends, a land of giants. Intrigued and excited by the possibility of such an unprecedented discovery, they embarked on a journey to unravel the truth behind the map. Under the leadership of Captain Abernathy, they organized a sea voyage, departing from the bustling port of London towards the edge of the world. The ship set sail under a clear blue sky, the wind favorable and the crew's spirits high. The explorers stood on the deck, watching their homeland shrink in the horizon, their hearts filled with anticipation and a hint of trepidation. They were on a path that no one had ever walked before, into the heart of the unknown, towards a land of giants. After weeks of battling tempestuous seas, monotonous stretches of blue, and bouts of homesickness, the explorers finally sighted land. The landmass appeared first as a faint blur on the horizon, growing steadily until it dominated their view with its sheer grandeur. Towering cliffs rose from the ocean, capped with emerald green foliage that swayed in the coastal breeze. Waterfalls cascaded down these cliffs, their thunderous roars echoing across the vast expanse of the sea. As the ship anchored in a sheltered bay, the explorers stepped onto the shore, their hearts pounding with excitement and a hint of fear. The sandy beach under their feet felt strangely solid, each grain of sand unusually large, the pebbles like small boulders. The flora was lush and oversized, with leaves broad enough to provide shelter from a downpour and flowers whose fragrance wafted for miles. Their first encounter with a giant came sooner than expected. As they were taking in the surreal sights, a figure emerged from the dense vegetation. His size was awe-inspiring, his head touching the lower branches of the towering trees, his shoulders broad as boulders. The explorers froze, their breath hitching at the sight of this colossal being. However, 
Their fear soon subsided as they noticed the gentle smile on the giant's face. His eyes, though large as dinner plates, held a warm, friendly glow. He spoke in a deep, rumbling voice, words they didn't understand, but his gestures were unmistakably welcoming. He extended a hand, palm up, a universal sign of peace. Dr. Pemberton, the historian, stepped forward, placing her comparatively tiny hand on the giant's enormous finger, a gesture that seemed to please him. His booming laughter echoed through the forest, a sound that was surprisingly comforting. The giant, who introduced himself as Gorham through a series of gestures and broken words, became their guide. He showed them around his world, where everything was enormous, from the towering trees to the gigantic insects buzzing around. It was a world where time seemed to move slower, as if the giant's size influenced the very flow of time itself. The sun's arc across the sky was languid, and the rhythm of life seemed unhurried. The explorers were awestruck by this land of giants, their initial fear replaced with fascination and wonder. They had embarked on a journey into the unknown, and as they stood there, in the shadow of a friendly giant, they realized they had stepped into a world that was beyond their wildest imagination. Days turned into weeks as the explorers ventured deeper into this extraordinary land. The landscape was an artist's dream, filled with towering mountains that scraped the heavens, their snow-capped peaks lost in the clouds. The verdant valleys nestled between these mighty mountains were crisscrossed by rivers, their clear waters gushing with the intensity of a dozen horses. These rivers were like colossal serpents, winding and curling their way through the landscape, often disappearing into the bowels of the giant earth, only to emerge at some distant point. Waterfalls cascaded down from unimaginable heights, their roaring descent creating misty rainbows that added a touch of magic to this already surreal world. The terrain was treacherous and unforgiving, testing the explorer's mettle at every step. The earth under their feet was a maze of rocky outcrops and loose gravel, making each step a calculated risk. The once towering trees were now mere shrubs compared to the gigantic flora that surrounded them, their trunks as wide as their ship. But they persevered, their determination fueled by the thrill of discovery and the promise of unseen wonders. Professor Gallagher, the geologist, used his extensive knowledge of rock formations and seismic activity to chart a safe path through the mountainous terrain. His sharp eyes could spot the subtlest signs of land instability, and his experience guided them away from potential hazards. Meanwhile, Miss Gupta, the engineer, used her problem-solving skills and creativity to overcome the many obstacles they encountered. She designed makeshift bridges across gushing streams and created tools from the giant flora and fauna that helped them navigate this outsized landscape. Her ingenious solutions often turned potential setbacks into opportunities for further exploration. Together, they traversed this giant land each day unveiling a new aspect of this uncharted world. They marveled at the sheer scale of their surroundings and the simplicity of giant life. The journey was not easy, but the spirit of discovery and the camaraderie amongst them turned every challenge into an adventure. Their footsteps, though small compared to the giant world around them, marked the beginning of a human journey in a land where everything else was larger than life. As they journeyed deeper into the heart of the land, the explorers came upon a vast clearing. Here, in the shadow of the monumental mountains, a gathering of giants was taking place. The sight was astonishing. Giants of all ages, their sizes varying as much as the humans, congregated in the open space their deep voices resonating through the air like a symphony of bass tones. In the center of the clearing, a grand celebration was underway. 
enormous bonfires, their flames reaching the heights of the tallest trees, lit up the night sky. The giants moved in harmony around them, their enormous bodies swaying and stomping in a dance that made the earth tremble. Yet, their movements were surprisingly graceful, their steps synchronized in a rhythm that seemed to mimic the pulse of the land itself. Dr. Pemberton, the historian, watched the spectacle with an academic curiosity. Over the past weeks, she had been meticulously documenting their encounters with the giants and had started to decipher their language, a complex mix of deep vocalizations and expressive gestures. With her linguistic skills and understanding of ancient cultures, she began to decode the meaning behind this grand celebration. It appeared to be a ritual of thanksgiving, a time for the giants to express their gratitude towards the land that sustained them. The dance was a physical manifestation of their respect for nature, and the deep, rhythmic chants were songs of appreciation. This grand spectacle was not just a celebration, it was a testament to the giants' deep-rooted connection with their environment. With Dr. Pemberton's guidance, the explorers gradually began to interact with their hosts. The giants, intrigued by these small beings who were attempting to communicate in their language, responded warmly. They shared their food, enormous fruits and vegetables that were as delicious as they were large. They invited the explorers to join their dance, a hilarious and heartwarming sight of tiny humans trying to match steps with the gigantic beings. This interaction deepened their understanding of the giant civilization. They were a peaceful society, living in harmony with their surroundings, their size dictating a slower, more mindful way of life. The explorers were humbled by their graciousness and their respect for nature. They realized that despite their physical differences, the giants shared the same values of community, gratitude, and respect for the natural world. As the explorers ventured further into the land of giants, they began to encounter the colossal creatures that inhabited this vast landscape. The scale of these creatures was astounding, a testament to the unique evolutionary path life had taken in this land. Dr. Hartley, the biologist, was at the forefront of these encounters, his scientific curiosity piqued by the gigantic fauna. He cataloged and studied them, his fascination growing with each new discovery. There were insects as big as horses, their exoskeletons shimmering in the sunlight, their compound eyes a mesmerizing pattern of geometric perfection, beetles with mandibles that could snap a branch, dragonflies that whirred past like miniature helicopters, and butterflies whose wings painted a riot of colors in the air. Then there were the birds. They soared in the sky, their wingspans wider than the rivers that snaked through the land. Their calls echoed through the valleys, a symphony of sounds that filled the air with an ethereal music. From the majestic sky whales, their bodies floating effortlessly in the sky, to the agile windhawks, their sharp eyes scanning the ground for prey. Each species was a marvel of nature's ingenuity. But these encounters were not without their challenges. The explorers had to learn quickly how to navigate these giant creatures' territories to avoid startling them or trespassing their nesting grounds. They learned to camouflage their presence, to move with the rhythm of the land, and to respect each creature's space. It was a constant lesson in survival, a test of their adaptability and respect for life in all its forms. Dr. Hartley's observations and insights were invaluable. He studied the creatures' behaviors, their feeding patterns, and their interactions with the environment. His knowledge helped the explorers understand these beasts not as threats, but as integral parts of the giant ecosystem. They learned to coexist with them, observing from a safe distance, and in turn, the creatures began to accept their presence. Every day presented a new discovery, 
a new species to document, a new behavior to decipher. The land of the giants was proving to be a treasure trove of biological wonders, a living testament to the infinite forms that life could take and the explorers were just beginning to scratch the surface of its rich biodiversity. Weeks into their expedition, the explorers found themselves confronting a challenge of a magnitude they had never anticipated. The skies, which had so far remained a calm canvas of blue, suddenly turned into a roiling mass of dark clouds. The tranquil atmosphere of the giant land was disrupted by the ominous rumble of distant thunder. A storm was brewing, and by the looks of it, it was going to be massive. As the first drops of rain began to fall, the explorers quickly realized that this was no ordinary storm. The raindrops were the size of pebbles, their impact sending sprays of water in all directions. The wind howled like a beast, bending the gigantic trees and stirring up colossal waves in the nearby river. The explorers sought shelter, but the storm was relentless. The giant-sized rain and wind turned the landscape into a churning, chaotic mess. The thunder echoed like the roar of a thousand beasts, and the lightning illuminated the land with a blinding intensity. It was terrifying and awe-inspiring at the same time. Despite the chaos, Captain Abernathy kept his composure. He rallied his team, encouraging them to stay together and keep moving towards higher ground. The geologist, Professor Gallagher, used his knowledge to identify a rocky outcrop that would provide some shelter. Miss Gupta, the engineer, quickly devised a way to secure their equipment and supplies using the giant flora around them. Dr. Pemberton and Dr. Hartley, meanwhile, assisted their fellow explorers, offering words of comfort and maintaining a sense of calm. The historian documented the storm, her writings a testament to their resilience in the face of this giant adversity. The storm raged on for what seemed like an eternity, but the explorers held on. They supported each other, their collective strength and unity enabling them to weather the storm. It was a harrowing experience that tested their courage, resilience, and teamwork. But it also brought them closer, forging their bond in the crucible of adversity. When the storm finally subsided, they emerged from their shelter, exhausted but unbroken. They had faced the wrath of a giant storm and survived. The land of the giants had tested their mettle, and they had proven their worth. Together, they stood tall amidst the aftermath, their spirits undeterred, their resolve stronger than ever. They were more than explorers now. They were survivors in a land of giants. In the aftermath of the storm, the explorers found themselves at the heart of the giant civilization. It was a vast settlement, nestled at the foot of the mountains, where structures made of massive trees and stones housed the gentle giants. They had reached the epicenter of the giant world, the place where the giants' culture and wisdom flourished. The giants welcomed the explorers with open arms, their enormous faces wearing expressions of respect and curiosity. The explorers, despite their exhaustion, were captivated by the sight. They were standing in the middle of a civilization that was both grand in size and in heart. In this place, the giants shared their wisdom. Through a series of gestures, and with the help of Dr. Pemberton's growing proficiency in their language, they communicated their philosophies and way of life. The giants spoke of respect for all creatures, big or small, each a vital cog in the wheel of life. They shared their understanding of nature's rhythms, of the importance of living in harmony with the environment, and of the humility that came from recognizing one's place in the grand scheme of things. The explorers listened, their hearts filled with a deep respect for these gentle beings. They saw the wisdom in the giant's words, realizing that despite their physical size, 
the giants considered themselves no more important than the smallest insect. This humility, coupled with their immense respect for all life forms, was a lesson the explorers would carry with them forever. They spent several days at the heart of the giant civilization, learning and interacting with the giants. They witnessed their traditions, their communal way of life, and their deep-rooted connection with the land. They saw how the giants' enormous size did not make them tyrants, but guardians, their strength used to protect and nurture rather than dominate. This encounter with the giants' wisdom marked a turning point in the explorer's journey. They had set out as adventurers, eager to discover a new land. But now, they were students, humbled by the wisdom of the giants, learning valuable lessons about respect and humility. The land of the giants had become more than an uncharted territory. It was a teacher, a guide, a testament to the fact that size does not dictate importance and that true greatness lies in respect and humility. As the explorers prepared to leave the land of the giants, they gathered one last time amidst the colossal trees and towering mountains, their hearts filled with a mix of nostalgia and anticipation. They had come as strangers to this giant land, but they were leaving as friends, their lives forever marked by this extraordinary adventure. They reflected on their journey, the challenges they had overcome, the wonders they had witnessed, and the lessons they had learned. They remembered their first encounter with a giant, the grand celebration, the gigantic creatures, the harrowing storm, and their time at the heart of the giant civilization. Each memory was a testament to their courage, resilience, and the bonds they had formed, not just with each other, but with the giants and the land itself. They thought about the giants' wisdom, the profound lessons of respect and humility they had imparted. They realized how this journey had changed them, how it had opened their eyes to a different perspective of life, one where size did not equate to importance, and where every creature, big or small, had a crucial role to play. As they stood on the shore, ready to embark on their journey back to their world, they made a promise. They vowed to carry the wisdom of the giants with them, to share the tales of their adventures and the lessons they had learned. They would speak of the grandeur of the giants, their peaceful way of life, and their deep respect for all creatures. They promised to ensure that their journey would inspire others, sparking a newfound appreciation for the diversity of life. They hoped their story would serve as a reminder of the importance of humility and respect, values that transcended physical size and strength. With these promises etched in their hearts, they set sail, leaving behind the land of the giants. As they drifted away, they looked back one last time, their eyes capturing the image of the giants waving them off their massive forms silhouetted against the setting sun. Their journey had come full circle, but the explorers knew that the real adventure was just beginning. They were returning with more than just memories. They were bringing back wisdom, a new perspective, and a story that had the power to inspire change. The land of the giants had given them a mission, and they were ready to fulfill it. When the explorers returned to their world, they were hailed as heroes. News of their journey to the land of the giants had reached their civilization, sparking a wave of excitement and anticipation. Their arrival was met with cheers and applause, their names etched in the annals of history as pioneers and adventurers. Yet the explorers, touched by the humility of the giants, chose to approach their newfound fame with grace and modesty. They stepped onto their homeland not as triumphant conquerors, but as humble messengers carrying tales from a far-off land. In the days that followed, 
they shared their experiences, recounting the stories of their adventure. They spoke of their encounters with the gentle giants, the colossal creatures, the grand celebrations, and the terrifying storm. But instead of emphasizing their courage or heroism, they focused on the lessons they had learned. They spoke about the giants' wisdom, their respect for all creatures, and their deep connection with the environment. They shared the giants' philosophy of humility, of recognizing one's place in the grand scheme of things, and of the importance of living in harmony with all forms of life. They painted a picture of a society that was not defined by its physical size, but by its values and principles. Their stories resonated with their people. They listened, captivated by the tales from the land of the giants, moved by the wisdom of these gentle beings. The explorers' humble demeanor and their focus on the lessons learned, rather than their heroic deeds, made their stories even more impactful. Slowly but surely, their stories began to change perceptions. People started to reflect on the explorers' experiences, recognizing the wisdom in the giant's way of life. They began to understand the importance of respect for all forms of life, the significance of humility, and the need for harmony with nature. The explorers, through their stories, had not only brought the wisdom of the giants to their world, but had also sparked a change in their people. Their journey to the land of the giants had transcended the realms of adventure and discovery, evolving into a catalyst for change, a testament to the power of humility, respect, and understanding. The explorer's journey did not end with their return. In fact, it marked the beginning of a new chapter. With their stories echoing through their civilization, they assumed the role of ambassadors, ambassadors of peace, respect, and understanding. They used their influence and the lessons they had learned from the giants to foster a harmonious world. They advocated for the value and respect of all life, big or small, emphasizing that every creature had a role to play and that every life was integral to the tapestry of existence. Through speeches, writings, and their day-to-day -day actions, they embodied the principles they had learned in the land of the giants. They worked tirelessly to ensure that these principles were integrated into their society's values, laws, and educational systems. They strived to create an environment where respect for all forms of life was not just a concept, but a way of life. Their efforts bore fruit, slowly but surely. People began to value and respect all creatures, recognizing their importance in maintaining the balance of nature. This shift in perspective brought about a change in their interaction with the environment, fostering a more harmonious coexistence with all forms of life. The explorer's story, the legend of the land of the giants, became a constant source of inspiration. It served as a reminder of their journey, their learnings, and the wisdom of the giants. It was a tale that transcended generations, its lessons etched in the hearts and minds of their people. As the years passed, the explorer's legacy continued to flourish. Their story became a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of humility, respect, and understanding. It reminded everyone that true greatness was not about physical size or strength, but about the size of one's heart and the depth of one's respect for others. The legend of the land of the giants was more than just an adventure. It was a philosophy, a way of life, a beacon guiding their civilization towards a more harmonious existence. The explorers had not only discovered a new land, but also a new perspective, one that would continue to inspire and guide their people towards a more respectful and understanding world.